Hi, this is Glenn Lowry. I want you guys to know that The Glenn Show is moving to its own YouTube channel. If you don't want to miss new episodes, then I'd encourage you, please follow the link in the description and subscribe to The Glenn Show at the new YouTube channel. You can also help us out and help the channel grow by commenting uh, and by hitting the like button, you know, the YouTube algorithm. So that's the announcement. Stay tuned. There's much more to come. Thanks. There's a stringency that's necessary when you're doing this sort of thing. I hear, I hear what you mean. I wouldn't use the phrase good faith because that's just not my phrase, but I, I see what you mean, motorcycle. Hey, man, let me just tell you, it's Jean-Paul Sartre's phrase. I'm, I'm, it's, 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 uh, oh, you it's mean that? Socialism. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, you're, that's you're quite, that's where the phrase comes from. I'm not sure I mean exactly that, but that's my motivation. It's funny. I just got a dose of him from Louis Menand's new book about um, about mid 20th century intellectual and artistic movements. Okay, I see. I see what you mean. That's that's a kind of a definition 3.0. But I, I know what you mean. Um, this is more well talking to the Communist Party and during the uh, Spanish Civil War, if you know what I mean. I mean. You know, he's a man of the left. He's definitely anti-fascist, but it's like, can we get real with what's actually happening in our own ranks and things of this kind? It's not, there's not a perfect fit between the two, but that's the kind of integrity that I want to extol. The, the kind my of sen- good yeah, faith my- that I advocate. Yeah, uh, my sense in writing is always, you steer between two poles. If it's too easy, probably there's something wrong with it. You're supposed to be questioning the world. You're supposed to be questioning yourself. There are things that I write sometimes in like a first draft, to the extent that I do what we would call a first draft. And the, I think to my, there's something that there's a feeling that's halfway between having a, an eyelash behind your contact lens and wanting to throw up a little bit. And I know when I get that <laughs> feeling that I'm writing something I don't mean. And it's often the sort of thing where, yeah, I'm, I'm tempted to have that left person understand that I'm not the terrible person they've often been told. And I I think to myself, but wait a minute, I don't believe this. And so that person is just going to have to not like me that, that impulse. But then on the other hand, to not be writing just to throw bombs and trying to get people upset because that's wrong too. That makes me want to throw up a little bit as well. So it's just striking that middle road, but I'm perplexed by some people where it seems that they seem to genuinely think that, especially when you're writing about race, that if it feels easy and if it feels good and if it feels tribal, it's 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 good. It's the good with a capital G, that it's virtue to go really pretentious in the sense of Aristotle, that it's excellence when it's easy, tribal, makes you feel good, is probably personal rather than abstract. I distrust that. Sometimes things that are all for those things are the good. They are virtue. But just as often, you could have... The truth is more elusive than the person might think, and it would require a little bit more work to find it, I often feel. But I, I see what you mean. I see how you might. It's funny. I met you during that middle phase. I wouldn't have. You played the part. Well, I wouldn't have known that to an extent you weren't being yourself. Like when you and I ran up against each other at Harvard back in, I think, 03. Yeah. I didn't know that. And I'm not saying you were putting on an act, but I didn't know that you were wearing a different costume than what you would now think of as your true self. And yeah, that must have taken a lot of work. Yeah. Well, I wasn't really consciously aware of I am now going to act the following. It's only in retrospect that it becomes clear to me that 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 is uh, that is what was going on. I mean, in the feelings, it's it's not just ideas. It's also, you know, embodying the role. It, it's like the the energy that comes from it and, and self righteousness is a drug, man. Self righteousness is a very that you think you're right, the other people are wrong, and you're gonna finally tell them. And especially when you're a convert, especially when you come in from the opposite end of the thing, oh, yeah. you're now you're now in there, and you the scales have fallen from my eyes. I I know where this McWhorter and uh, losing the race is coming from because I've been there. But that is a dead end for this McWhorter, and he's using his own black people as butts. Uh, 
uh, stepping on them, stepping stones to his own, you know, you know, and et, et cetera. And, uh, and besides, everybody's against McWhorter. Doesn't it feel good to be on the team for a change instead of being the one in the box? You mm-hmm. know? <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, temp- it's tempting. It feels good, that sort of thing. I, I completely, I completely get that. You know, it's interesting, though, because there is a little social media stream that's saying that it's interesting. Whenever I say anything in the Times that is leftish, they're thinking that, the Times is stepfording me in some way that I'm I'm currying to my new bosses so that I don't get fired, especially because on right, language, right. I sound lefter than I do on race. But no, it's not that it's that I'm writing what I really believe. But people are on the watch for us in that sense. And they should be. You know, are you saying what you really believe? And we should we should try as hard as we can to do it. That's that's for the memoir to be focused on that, for that to be a fulcrum. I can't wait to read it. That's um, 